Welcome to another edition of the No Job Podcast. My name is Najee Simmons, your host. Here at the No Job Podcast, you already know we believe that everybody has to earn a living, but nobody has to have a job. You don't have to trade all of your time and energy just for green pieces of paper that you exchange just to extend your life a little bit longer. We believe it's about more than that. We believe work is about using your energy and your passion to build or contribute to something that you find to be important. And we all know that's not easy. That's why we're a part of this community, motivating each other, informing each other, and figuring out what it takes to get there. And one thing I found when observing others that I consider to be successful that it takes to get there is commitment. But it's a special kind of commitment because that kind of sounds obvious off the bat. But another experience in life that required a major commitment from me taught me a lot about the commitment I think it takes to succeed in making your dream come alive, to make a living doing something that you love. Because if you're listening, most of us have tried some things. We we put forth some effort, but we might not be there yet. Why is that? What is it that we haven't done? I'm going to tell the story of when my wife and I got engaged and, of course, eventually married. And how that links to this problem. What's the one thing I haven't done? What is the one thing I haven't done that would bring me from where I am to where I want to be? Stay tuned. This is the No Job Podcast. So I told you I was going to tell you about when I got engaged to my wife. So let me set the stage first. I had a job, a pretty good job, by the way, but I didn't have all the money I needed. I didn't have my own place yet, didn't have my own apartment. I certainly didn't have enough money to save to pay for the kind of wedding that we both wanted. We didn't want anything insane, but we knew it was going to be substantial as far as the cost is concerned. I didn't have a lot of what I needed to do what I wanted to do. Does that situation sound familiar to you? Probably. But then I did something crazy. I proposed anyway. So I I got a part-time job in addition to my full-time job to save money quicker to purchase the ring, which I did. And I proposed to my wife, not having a place for us to go live, not having the money to have the wedding that we wanted to have, not having so much, but taking the only step that I could, making the move that was in front of me and hoping the rest would take care of itself. So for the next few months, my wife and I both worked hard, put money away, saved up. We got under contract with a wedding venue, one that we both like, and we were really looking forward to it. And we did everything we could to afford the wedding of our dreams, everything in our power. And we were paying in installments due at certain deadlines. And my wife and I can both be A-types when it comes to this sort of stuff. So we like to pay things on time. We like to pay bills when we're supposed to. And We come up on one of the dates, and lo and behold, we are $5,000 short. $5,000 short of the payment that we needed to pay for the wedding at the venue that we had chosen. And there was nowhere we could pull the money from. But somehow we had peace about it. And my wife and I, we worship God. We worship the Father and we gave it to God in prayer. And I'm not saying we're like this in every single instance, but I don't remember worrying at all, even being short that money. So we go to church, right? And the money's due that coming week, I believe, if I remember correctly. And a woman that, that my wife and I both know at church comes up to me and she asked me if I've been praying lately. And I don't know, I just thought it was a throwaway church question. People who go to church know about that. And I said, oh, sure, yeah. Hands me an envelope. She says, "Uh, open this later. Okay, I say, thanks. So, and you know where this is going, but it really went there. I get Jen. We like hide in the corner in the back of the church. Couldn't wait to get home to open it. I open it up. How much money do you think is inside the envelope? A check for $5,000. That is the first and last time that somebody gave me, gifted me $5,000. I had no expectation that it was coming to me, and especially not in that way. But all of a sudden, I had what I needed to do what I needed to do. 
And some of you in your business endeavors, me in my business endeavors too, me in the pursuit of my dreams too, some of us are waiting. We're looking for that last $5,000 we need, but, but we, it, it just doesn't seem to want to materialize. What did I do in that story? What did I do in that story, guys? What did I do in that story that made the $5,000 come to me? That made the father put that provision in my hand and in my wife's hand? I'll tell you what I did. I put a ring on it. I committed. I signed a contract with the wedding venue. I wrote a post on IG earlier this week, and it said, expecting your level of success to exceed your level of commitment is insane. So you're telling yourself and everybody else who will listen what you want to happen in your life. You're telling yourself and everybody else that you want to be a musician, a guitar player, a singer for a living. You're telling yourself and everybody else that you want to open a restaurant. You're telling yourself and everybody else about what you want to do. But maybe if you take inventory, what you might realize is that you never put a ring on it. You never really committed. And remember, when I put a ring on it, when I made that commitment, when I married my dream, I I didn't have everything I needed to make it come true, but I made the strongest commitment that it was possible for me to make up until that point. What was that? That was a public declaration, getting on one knee and proposing to my wife in the presence of witnesses. And two, booking the venue, signing the contract, saying I'm going to pay X amount of dollars on X date, not necessarily knowing where I was going to get that money. Now, I'm not advising you to go signing contracts willy-nilly, and I'm not advising you to propose to people that you haven't really thought strongly and considered. But what I'm saying is, when you know what you want to do, your next step is not for somebody to give you something. Your next step is not for something to fall from the sky upon you. Your next step is to commit. So go get a ring and put it on your dream's hand. What is a ring in your situation? <laughs> you always see those, those IG posts and reels about buy you an LLC. I don't know. Is your ring an LLC? Is it putting in the newspaper that such and such is starting a business in the classifieds? Is it, is it trademarking your invention? Is it hiring a patent attorney to assist you in protecting the intellectual property for what you do? Have you made an, it? Have you bought the domain name for your website yet? Go to go to GoDaddy.com or the Google one and get that domain name. You ain't even put your name on it yet. So all I gotta say is, all I want to tell you is, if 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 it doesn't seem like you're getting the provision you need to make things happen, perhaps, maybe, could be that you haven't committed to it. And that's why the resources have not been committed to you. We're going to talk about this in a second. My name is Najee Simmons, and this is the No Job Podcast. We just talked about the story of my proposal to my wife and the resources to get married coming into our lives. Once I made the commitment I needed to make and once it was official, And once I decided that this is going to have to happen, once I decided that I'm, ooh, I'm changing direction right now. So a commitment, our commitment isn't a promise that anything else is going to happen except this. It's a promise that you are going to stay on task to do everything you can possibly do to make your dream come true. So your commitment is, is, saying nothing about how your family and friends will react to you. Your commitment is saying nothing about what the result will be at the end. Your commitment is all about you. That's why the marriage vows are written the way they are. You pledge your loyalty and your love and your earthly goods to your husband and wife till death do you part. You promise what you're going to do to make this thing work. And yeah, they make a promise, but you can't make that promise for them. And if they don't honor that promise, there's nothing you can do about it. So when you're standing at that altar, when when you're considering your dream or your goal and your vision and you're deciding to commit, 
Don't be thinking about what you think that thing is going to do for you. Don't be thinking about the money you're going to get. Don't be thinking about the, the respect and the, and the good reputation that you're going to get. Don't be thinking about that because that is either going to come or it's not. That has nothing to do with your promise. Your commitment is what you're going to do. It has everything to do with character and integrity in spite of your circumstances. And not because of them. Because it's easy. It, Lord have mercy. If, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. If you got the reward right away, there would be no such thing as a lazy person. Okay, do you understand that? There would be no such thing as a lazy person if you just got what you wanted out of what you did immediately. Just like that. Your commitment is all about you and what you're promising to do. That's why, big picture here, that's why you should only commit to something that actually matters to you. Something that you think is noble, something that you think is good, and something that you think is worthy to be pursued, whether you're able to accomplish it or not. Something that has intrinsic value to you. Something that is naturally attractive and important to you. Because if you start committing to things just because of what you think they're going to give you, as soon as you don't get the result, you're not going to have the gas in your tank to keep going on the long journey. And we all agree that this is going to be a long journey. So I want you to start looking at your marriage and, and I'm sorry, I want you to start looking at your business more like a marriage. Start looking at your business like your wife or like your husband more than like a prostitute. Somebody who you're going to pay and they're going to give you something back. But when it comes to your wife, when it comes to your husband, it's all about what you're going to do for them to honor the father to honor God, to honor Christ. So let's flip our mentality. And maybe when we think about it like this, we find we're going to have to have new goals because really we, we, re we realized that our old goals were, were all about things and all about stuff. And listen, I said at the top of this podcast, I say it every, every episode and I believe it. We can make a living doing things that we love and that are important to us. But what I'm, what I'm, what I'm asking you to do here is to consider whether you really love it or whether it's really important to you. Is there any world in which you would do this if you weren't going to make a living doing it? If people didn't have work, if, if, if UBI was the law of the land and everybody had the same exact salary and you wouldn't be doing this thing and that's not what you'd be spending your time doing, then that ain't something you want. So just like I would advise you to consider it carefully before you marry somebody, Consider it carefully before you commit because there's cost to commitments that don't work out. Lord, Lord knows there's cost to commitments that don't work out, but this is something that you and I have decided is worth the price. What's worth it? What's worth it to you? That thing, that discipline, that, that craft, that idea, that message that you want to give out to the whole world that actually means something to you, that you actually think is worth pursuing, even if you end up not being able to do it, that's something that I think can be your no job. So join us on the path of joblessness, not because it's cool or because people admire it or because it's the way that uh, you think you're going to get a sense of self-worth. Do it because the work itself is worthy. And I'm just leaving y'all with that. My name is Najee Simmons, and this is the No Job Podcast. Hey, guys, if you liked what you heard, if this message resonates with you, if you want to join us on the path to no job, do yourself a favor and to subscribe to this podcast and page. And reach out, comment on the Instagram at the No Job Podcast, and tell us what you like, what you don't like, and what you want to hear more of. This is a conversation. Thank you so much for joining us and I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a good one.